does withdrawing from sectarianism include not claiming uh, an anti-Salafi or anti-Sufi movement? Should one look at all groups without seeing the sectarianism? I mean, Imam Madik said every group that calls himself other than Muslimun is, is min ahl al-bid'ati wal ahwa. So if they have a name other than what Allah called, who alladhi sammakum min al-Muslimin min qabr wa fi hadha. If they have a name other than Muslims, it's a, it's a innovation. So, and that's not saying like having a name related to a person because, or a, or a school in grammar, like a Basran or a Kufan. That's not a sect. That's a, a school of thought. So that doesn't go under that category. To say somebody is, uh, you know, Maliki or Hanafi or Shafi'i, it's understood that they're following the Quran and the Sunnah according to the methodology of a school. So, and those methodologies are agreed upon. I mean, that's the difference. So people that are following outside of those methodologies, uh, you know, traditionally they would definitely be called mubtidya. Obviously the modern uh, Muslim world, uh, there's a lot of people that have abandoned those methodologies. They don't consider them necessary. Um, and they're trying to get back to the book and the sunnah and these things. Many of these people, they're sincere people, and uh, it's a very confusing time. So it's important just not to have negative attitudes towards Muslims in general. Um, if they're sectarian in, in that they're calling other Muslims kafirs or mubtidia, then that's pure sectarianism. It's as simple as that. But if they're not, then it's a live and let, let live world. We're not under the khilafah. The Ottomans are gone. The Abbasids are gone. The Umayyads are gone. There's nobody here to tell us, oh, you have to do this or you have to do that, right? So now we just do our best uh, until the situation gets straightened out. Um, but I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, like, get into anti-Salafi or anti-Sufi or whatever kind of bashing. Just leave people alone and uh, follow uh, what... what uh, I mean, the best thing to, is to follow what the majority of Muslims have always followed. That's, that's the best thing. Well, I mean, in our glory days, we were following four madhab. Everybody wants to get back to the glory days. Well, they were Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, and Hanbalis. Right? That's what they were. There's, nobody was outside of a madhab. Ibn Taymiyyah was not outside of a madhab. He was a Hanbali scholar. Ibn Qayyim al Juzi was a Hanbali. Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. Right? Hint, hint. They were all following madhab. What, what, what some of them argued was the, the blind adherence, the taqlid that became predominant in the Muslim world uh, needed to be uh, unfettered so that people could start thinking again. That's, that's true. I mean, that's, that's simply true. And taqlid is a negative quality. It's, the ulama recognized taqlid as a default it's a default. If you're not a mushtahid, then you, you can't make uh, ishtihad. You have to do taqlid. And it's better to be a mushtahid than a muqallid, undeniably. And some of them even argued you could not be a muqallid in aqidah. You had to be a mushtahid. And that was a serious debate in the Muslim tradition. Even the Ash'aris argued that. Not all of them, but some of them. So it's just a bit better just... Don't get into sectarian mentality. You know, in the mu'minuna ikhwa. The the Muslims are brothers and sisters, and everybody who's a Muslim. The, the you know the the people, the enemies of Islam don't distinguish us. We're just all Muslims. You know, they don't. They're not looking at oh, is he a Hanafi or you know oh yeah, he might be one of those good Muslims. The only good Muslim is a dead Muslim, according to some people. And even then they don't think they're that good. <laughs>